This is 3 News Daily. Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to 3 News Daily. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thank you for being with me on this Wednesday afternoon for what matters most to you in Northeast Ohio. And boy, is it a hazy day out there today. I thought there was a fire on my block this morning when I was outside walking my dog. But no, the fire is up north. And that's where we start today with an air quality alert that's in effect. Now, if you have to step outside, you might say it smells like a bonfire. I would personally add a bonfire that has plastic burning in it. It is not a good smell out there. This is because the smoke from the Canadian wildfires has returned to Northeast Ohio. So hazy skies are being reported all across the Great Lakes region. And doctors warn that people with heart or lung disease, along with older adults and small children, should avoid physical activities outdoors, if at all possible. Now, while we're dealing with this, our 3 News weather team will continue to monitor the air quality and keep all of us updated with the most important information. We should add this. A number of events across Northeast Ohio that were supposed to be outdoors have been canceled or postponed because of the air quality. We've got a running list of those changes up on WKYC.com, so you can check there for that. All right, turning now to a story that we first reported last night at 11 o'clock. Guardians manager Terry Francona missed yesterday's game against the Royals. This is after he was hospitalized. The team said 64-year-old Tito didn't feel well before the game in Kansas City and was taken to a hospital in the area to be evaluated, quote, out of an abundance of caution due to his medical history. Tito missed much of the 2020 and 2021 seasons because of a variety of health issues. Here's bench coach DeMarlo Hale after finding out that Tito wouldn't be managing last night's game. He gave me a shout. He said, come in here. And, um, you know, he said, hey, look, I'm not too, feeling too well. You know, I'm going to take off. Uh, and I said, OK. Um, and it was so close. I didn't even get to ask him, like, you know, what's going on. Now, it was Hale who managed Cleveland for the final 63 games in 2021 and filled in for Tito last night when the Guardians beat Kansas City 2-1. to one. We don't have any word yet on if Tito will return for tonight's game or the rest of the series in Kansas City. He was held overnight for observation, and the Guardians are expected to give us an update on his condition today. Now today, Cleveland police are once again warning drivers, lock up your cars and hide your valuables. There has been another rash of car break-ins in a neighborhood on the city's west side. Several of the break-ins have been at the Battery Park lofts. Those residents say they've never seen this many car thefts. Here's one of them who happens to be the son of one of our morning show go directors. Just physically driving through the gate, forcing it up and over the car and then driving back out. If you get a call from the police asking you where your car is, chances are you probably don't know where it is. Numbers from Cleveland police show car thefts are up more than 80% in the city compared to this time last year. And police tell 3 News detectives have identified some of the suspects, but no word from them yet as to whether there have been any arrests tied to these thefts. Now, in other news, Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb announced appointments to the Cleveland Metropolitan School District's Board of Education. He made two new appointments and three reappointments to the board yesterday. Robert Briggs, you see on the upper left, and Diana Welch Howell on the upper right are the new appointees. So all five of these terms start next week. That's for the new members and the returning members. These terms will expire in 2027. And meanwhile, Eric Gordon, the beloved CEO of CMSD, holds that title for just two more days. Our Christy Paul sat down with him and asked him if there was a student in his 12 years as CEO that changed him. And he did not hesitate when he shared this story. A young person got put through to my office. He was a middle school student and he was really flustered and really upset and he said you're the superintendent right you need to help me and I was trying to calm him down my principal and he was going on and on and he said okay we're gonna solve this and um, I said where do you go to school and he explained that he goes to a charter school and I said oh you know I'm not your superintendent and he goes what do you mean you're supposed to help and I thought you know he's right why are we fighting about who owns children charter school or public school no, district school why aren't we fighting about why kids aren't all getting a quality education. And that was a moment that I changed my point of view on the relationship with our charter schools. And I've never met that kid. You don't know what happened? I, I don't know the rest of the story other than I left that call change. 
Wow. Now Gordon's last day is Friday. He'll have four weeks off for what he says is the first time since he was 14 years old. And then his work begins at Tri-C. That's where he'll be their new senior vice president of student development and education pipeline that starts July 31st. And he says he is excited to continue to be an advocate for students. I can tell you from everything I've heard about this man, that's exactly what he will continue to do. All right, thanks for being with us for today's edition of Free News Daily. Stay safe out there. Try and avoid being outside if you can. It is very, very hazy out there. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories from around Northeast Ohio.